What's up, Impact? Welcome to Impact at Home. But not my home, your home. So I guess I'm saying, welcome to your house. So there's a couple rules that you're gonna need to know. First, dress in your comfy clothes. Ditch the skinny jeans, put on the sweats that only you like. Next, take some notes. And while you're taking notes, make sure that you take them legibly because there's no point in writing something you can't read. While you're taking notes, you're gonna need some snacks. Get the service yum yums, you know what I mean? Man does not live on bread alone, but I sure do like it. And finally, get your Bible because we don't live on bread alone. So read the word, eat it up, it's gonna be really good. Next, we got some birthdays. Now, I don't know whose all birthday it is, but I know Justin Bieber does, so what you got, JB? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear you. Happy birthday to you. Thanks, Biebs. And hey, we're still doing city groups. So make sure that you go follow the link below and find your city group because we're meeting and we're really getting into God's word. And finally, though we might be physically distant, don't be spiritually distant. I challenge you to really engage with the sermon. Write a comment. If you're inspired, put a fire. Do what you need to do to make sure that your heart is really in this. Don't waste a moment and let's get into this sermon. Welcome to Impact at Home. I want to say hey to everyone watching online and those watching on YouTube. Hopefully you guys have had a great week. I don't know what you've done all mm -hmm. week. Uh, I know we've we been know busy we've praying for you guys, <laughs> getting ready for tonight. We're so excited that yeah. you are here. Well, hey, if you consider Impact family, if you consider Impact home, here's what we need from you, what we're asking from you. Like this video, comment, but more importantly, share it right now with somebody you think needs to hear it because yeah. we're all still one big family. It's just right now we're a big family and multiple multiple living rooms and multiple bedrooms and offices and basements all over Broken Arrow in Tulsa. So comment, share the video and let people know what's going on. And then what else we need from you is take a picture of your screen sharing right now. Take a picture of your screen set up and tag us at My Impact and you can win a quarantine snack. Yeah. Exactly. What, what have you done all week? How have you all been? All week long. Well, actually, I have had a huge honeydew list for Nate. So we yeah, have been working on that all week. Really I'm sure our neighbors good. really appreciate that. We're working on our front yard. We've got a garden that we're going to plant in our backyard. So we'll be able to make some homemade salsa hopefully soon. Fingers crossed. Hopefully she'll be able to share go. some homemade salsa because she always yeah, eats it herself. <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah, it is. But for the last couple of weeks, we have been talking about this topic of trust and what that looks like, especially in such a time of uncertainty. And we're all in the same boat right now. We're all yeah, walking absolutely. through the same thing. And yeah, it's been really hard. But this is really showing us where our foundation comes from. Yeah, our foundation moment. doesn't just come from physical contact. Our foundation comes from the trust and the reliance and the reliance that we have on our God. Yeah, and so, so good. I wanna kick it off with the first verse for you guys today, which is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And I love that the way the message specifically puts this verse, but it says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Yeah. Don't try to figure out everything on your own, which is something that we all try to do. Like, especially right now, we're all kind of trying to figure out what we can do, how we can make things better. But it says, instead, to listen for God's voice in everything that you do, everywhere that you go, for he is the one who will keep you on track. So we kicked this this series off three weeks ago, and we had no idea that this is what was going to happen with Impact. So it's kind of yeah. convenient um, where we're at today. But for three weeks, that was the the starting verse, and we've been talking about trust. And all I can think of the entire time that Caleb and I, and now you and I, have been up here talking to you about trust is Mark Ingram from the Baltimore Ravens and is Big Trust. <laughs> Whoop big dick. trust. Whoop woo woo. Dick. Lamar Jackson <laughs> in the flesh. Big yes, sir. Big, big trust. <laughs> Love that video. Love that saying. Um, but, but really, more than anything, what we're hoping you get from this is in this moment in your life, something we'll probably never forget. Right. But even when this is over, because it's going to be over at some point, mm -hmm. what are you putting your trust in? Like we yeah. talked about last week, Lindsay, what are you building your foundation on? Tonight, grab your Bibles, open them up to 1 Kings 17, 7 through 16. And the story I want to talk about is about a man named Elijah. Okay, not Elijah Rents, not that prophet, but the real prophet, Elijah. 
Elijah was an incredible man of God. He did amazing miracles. And right now in 1 Kings 17, we find him at a really weird point in his life. Yeah. It, there, there's a man named King Ahab and a woman, his wife, named Jezebel. And they're mm -hmm. terrible people and they hate Elijah. They hate all the prophets of God. In fact, uh, Jezebel's main goal in life is to one, worship Baal, but to two, wipe out all of the prophets of God and just eliminate God yeah. from that the entire region. And she was actually succeeding. She was doing yeah. a pretty good job. And the, the, the country was wicked. The king and queen were wicked. And so Elijah goes and he prays that there would be no rain for, yeah. thir for three years. And he calls it out. No rain for three years. And we find him in this story. He's at a brook right before 1 Kings 17, verse 7. Elijah is at a brook. And God supplies every need he would have in this famine, in this drought season, when everyone else is struggling to find food, like maybe a lot of you at Walmart and Target or your pantry <laughs> Don't have right now. Cereal, maybe. Um, yeah, maybe you went to your pantry or, um, before um, impact and you tried to find your favorite cereal and it wasn't there right. because you're in a drought season. It's now okay. there's only Hawaiian um, pizza. Hey, don't hate on which, Hawaiian pizza. I mean, Nate loves, but. Um, <laughs> but God instructs Elijah to go to this area and he gives him a brook so he has water mm -hmm. and then he brings him ravens but yeah. he's not going to eat the ravens. The ravens are bringing him food. So Grubhub came so cool. from 1 Kings 17. <laughs> um, so God is supplying Elijah, but now God asks Elijah to do something that's really, really crazy. God asks Elijah to go into uh, 100 miles north into a Phoenician city called um, Zarephath. And this is crazy because one, it's a Galilean city. They hate Galilee. Yeah. Two, the woman that hates him and wants him dead, this is her backyard. This is not far from her hometown, and God's asking him mm -hmm. to go there. And this, this entire mm -hmm. region, Lindsay, um, they've been in the famine too, but they've been hit even harder yeah, because even they're relying on Israel for food supply. And so they don't have as much food because Israel is in a drought. And so God's telling Elijah to go somewhere that's worse off than where he's at mm -hmm. and yeah. go to an area with a lady that wants him dead. And so that's where we pick up on our story, but I want you to understand, grab your Bibles, read along with Lindsay, because tonight what I want us to grab is we can have our ideas of everything we want to do, but what we really have to lean into is God's mm -hmm. promises. So if you guys have your Bibles, go ahead and read with us. We're going to read 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 16, and it says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she, rep she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and just a little oil in a jug. Yeah. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first make a small cake of bread for me and from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and for your son. For this is what the Lord said, the God of Israel, the jar of flour will not run dry, will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not dry until the day of the Lord gives rain on the land. So she went away and did as Elijah had told her. There was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry. And keeping the word of the Lord spoken over Elijah. I think that this story shows that there is a tremendous amount of trust. You have this widow who is literally, her and her son are on their deathbed, where she knows that she only has a scoop of flour and a few drops of oil, and she's going to go pick up some sticks to make a fire and make her last meal. And she sees this guy, who she doesn't know, come up to her and not only ask her for a little bit of her meal, but ask to be served first. And I can only imagine as a mom how that would feel is having somebody who you don't know that's asking so much of what you have. But if you go back a few chapters, we do know that God actually came to the widow and told her, hey, I have yeah. somebody that I'm going to be bringing to you. So be open. And so with that, 
I just want to talk a little bit about availability and the availability that she had, the willingness that she had in her heart to literally give pretty much everything that she had to someone that she didn't know. And in this season of life, we have a lot of available time. Yeah, and absolutely. a lot of it is um, not planned. It's not what we expected. But because we can choose to be available just like the widow chose to be available, God can continue to give you things and continue to bless you. But it causes us to really think about how we're going to do that. We're going to yeah. wake up every day. Are we going to choose to be available to God? A lot of us want to see blessings in our life. You want to see things come true. But at the same time, we have to realize that we've got to be available and we've got to make ourselves available. Yeah. And I think one, one thing I really love from this, Lindsay, is yeah. when you were reading this passage, um, more than anything, this widow made herself available. But I, I don't think you saw it, but there's something that fell out of your Bible that reminds you every single day you have a bunch of these yeah. but it reminds you of a mission trip you went on in college where you made yourself available and you went to India with some yeah. girls that were were caught in sex trafficking and you were just able to love on them and it, it, it changed your approach it changed your life and you yeah. you really were able to draw nearer to God in that trip and help them do that as well um, and that's forever put an imprint, an imprint on your life mm -hmm. because you made yourself available what is yeah. what is some more ways that right now we can make ourselves okay. available I think that you, first of all, have to start your day. I think even coming up with some sort of schedule where even if it's you wake up in the morning and you say, all right, God, I'm going to give you 10 minutes of my day and I'm going to put some worship music on and I'm going to just go right into the word. You know, yeah. whether that is so, um, you even getting on and Skyping or Zooming some friends of yours and doing a Devo together. I think that it's so easy to think of, oh, me, you know, and maybe feel pity for yourself because here you are stuck at home, yeah, but that's not it at all. We can choose to be available with what we have right now. And it's not always about good. what we used to have. It's about where we're at in the moment and choosing to make the best of every single situation. And that's what this widow did. And another verse that I love is found in James. It's James 4, 8. It says, come near to God and he will come near to you. So saying, if you come near to God and you choose to make yourself available yeah. and you choose to say, God, I want you in my day, please be a part of my life, God's going to yeah, do the same absolutely. thing for you. Absolutely. You're never, you're never going to regret that. Yeah. Uh, when you come near to God, like you didn't regret going on that mission trip. You're yeah. not going to regret the moments that right now you take opportunity of this and you're like, hey, you know what? I have more time than I have ever had in my life. Um, instead of being bored because there's not much to do, I'm just going to spend right. time with God. Um, another verse that comes to my mind is found in Jeremiah 29. And when you say Jeremiah 29, a lot of people are like, Jeremiah 29, 11, I know that verse. That's a yeah. really good verse. <laughs> but sometimes I think we focus so much on that verse that we really forget what God's yes, saying before yeah. and what God's saying after that. In Jeremiah 29, 13 through 14, it says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, remember back to Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, when we talked about mm -hmm. if we search God with our whole heart, if we trust God with our whole heart, Jeremiah 29, 13 is saying, if you look for me wholeheartedly, yeah. you will find me. I will be Good. found by you. So if you're actively searching for God right now, I promise you that you'll find him. Yeah. The, the widow didn't start this story out. That's why I love this story. She didn't yeah. start this story out actively searching for God. She was actively searching for right. sticks to make a fire and a cake for her and her son to go and die. But yeah. when she made herself available, she found a prophet named Elijah that changed her story forever. Yeah. And it, it just radically, radically intervened for her. So what, what are you learning right now in this season? Because I promise you right now, it might not be what you wanted it to be. And none of us planned this. None of us hoped for this. But I promise you, God has a purpose for you right now in yeah. this moment. But you're never going to find that purpose if you don't make yourself available for God to speak to the purpose he has for you. That's good. So wh what are you learning in this season of availability? Yeah. You'll never know if you don't make yourself available. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, and I can't even imagine to just thinking about where she was and all that she came from and the sacrifice that she made. You know, she made herself available and the next thing that she had was faith. You know, she really had nothing else left to yeah. offer, but yet she clung to faith. She clung to everything that she had knowing that there was or that there could be something greater. And so another verse that we have for you is Hebrews 11.1. 1. It says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for, for it is the evidence of things that we cannot see. Yeah. And just like Nate said, obviously we couldn't see that this was gonna happen this month. Like we had no idea, but God did, and it didn't surprise him. And I believe that the widow 
thought the same thing. She maybe didn't foresee this drought happening in her life, but she chose to take the little bit of faith that she had. And who knows, the Bible doesn't elaborate on her relationship with God. But what we do know is continuing to read this is that her faith began to grow. And meeting Elijah was just the very tip of the iceberg. She met him and yeah, it took a little time. It took some time for, for them to build a relationship. But I think that what she began to see through Elijah just, I mean, began to grow her faith and began to challenge her to know that there was something greater out there and to not be afraid of dying. At the same time, I I think a lot of times we look at a situation and we think, wow, that's the worst possible outcome. You know, the worst thing that I could do is make my last meal and go and be with my son. But there was something more for her. And so she had the faith to do that. So what kind of faith are we going to have? So good. I think... um, (laughs) I love I love the movies, and you've probably watched a lot of movies. I know we yes. have watched a lot. Thank of God movies. for Disney Plus right now. Um, I don't know where we'd be without that. <laughs> well, speaking of Disney Plus, Disney Plus just released a movie that I wanted to go see in in theaters, but it just um, having kids is hard sometimes. Yeah. So you're like, oh, let's go do this. You're like, oh, it's too hard to find a babysitter, um, and so we miss a lot of movies, and we just wait till they come out on yeah. DVD, or we can stream them a lot easier. And Disney Plus released Onward, mm-hmm. and I wanted to watch so it, and so I sat down and. I watched it and I really enjoyed it. I wasn't sure if I would at first, um, but it's these two brothers that are on this, this magical quest um, to try to spend one day with their dad. And they, yeah. they go on this side journey um, that they thought, you know, wouldn't be the typical thing. They right. thought it'd be the highway, but the older brother's like, no, this is it, I promise. And they, it leads them to this massive canyon. And there's a bridge on the other side, a drawbridge that's ready to come down. Mm -hmm. But in order to pull it down, you have to pull the lever, which is on the other side. And the brother encourages the younger brother. He's like, you got this. You got this. Just step out in faith. And they tie a rope to him. It's this really cool scene. And the brother steps out and he takes one step and he just gets encouraged. And like a lot of us often do in our faith when God's like, hey, I want you to do this. And you step out and you're like, hey, I got this. And then you take another step. And it doesn't go like you expected and you feel like you're falling, but the older brother was there to grab him and pull him back. Mm -hmm. And then I love what he said. And it's just like, believe with every step. Wow. And that's, that's what God's asking you and me to do every single day is this journey in famines and in pandemics and in life, Mm -hmm. even way beyond when this is over, believe with every step. Mm -hmm. God is asking you to trust him and have faith in him every single step of your life. Because there's going to be good seasons, there's going to be bad seasons, but can you trust him to keep taking another step, another step? Because he has a purpose and a plan for your life. And I have no idea what you're feeling right now in this season. I have no idea if you're like, this is the best moment ever. I'm loving this. <laughs> all those Enneagram nines out there. <laughs> yeah. For, for all the, the sevens to, to tag off the Enneagram, um, you're like, I hate this. I hate this. So I can only entertain myself with my family and my siblings who are driving me crazy for so long. I don't know how you're feeling, but I promise you that right now, yeah. if you make yourself available and you have the faith to say, God, I'm stepping out and I'm believing with every single step that in this famine season, in this pandemic season, you have a word for my life. You have something for my life. But in order to do that, I have to make myself available and I have to trust that you've got me. Yeah, that's so good. One thing that I've picked up a lot with reading just different stories throughout the Bible is that some of the most significant stories that there ever are, there's no name mentioned for them. And you look at the story of the widow of Zarephath and her son, they're, they're not given a name. Like the Bible doesn't say their names, but what it does talk about is their willingness to serve. Yeah. You know, we see that she loved serving and that that was her desire to serve. And so, I mean, like we mentioned before, she was available. She had faith. She trusted. But that next thing was actually taking the step and saying, all right, I'm going to serve you. And in turn, I'm going to serve the Lord. And that's, yeah, so good. that's my life. That's where that's where I'm going to go. That's my next step. Yeah. And right now I know it's difficult and it's hard because I think a lot of us were so used to going so fast and serving in all these different areas, going in all these different directions. And all of a sudden life just comes to a screeching halt from zero to, or from 60 to zero. And now it's like, okay, how do I continue to serve and do the things that I was doing before? And I think instead of asking ourselves, how do we do the things that we're doing before? The question that we really should be asking is, how do I serve in a new way in this yeah. season now? And That's what that good. looks like. Because truthfully, we're not able to serve each other 
like we did before. But the opportunity that we have to serve right now, I think is better in this season. Yeah, absolutely. And so as you're sitting at home in your room, I know we're all watching this at the same time, we can decide, all right, every morning, I'm gonna choose to serve my family. I'm gonna yeah. choose to serve the people that are in these four walls around me. And Mom, that way, when good. I can serve them, and as I'm learning to serve them right now, me going out, and especially when this is all over, the ability that I'm going to be able to serve people is going to be so much greater because yeah. I can serve people in this same season. And I think that that's exactly what she had. That's her attitude is I'm going to serve where I am now, knowing that there's something greater and having a hope that that's going to come true. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I love, I love Mark 9, 35. You know, it's another verse that talks about service. And it, Jesus, he sits down with his disciples and he says, whoever wants to be first must take last place yeah. and be the servant of everyone else. That's so counterintuitive to what we want to do. Right. It's like, okay, I want to be first. I'm going to serve me. I'm going to yeah. serve my needs, my thoughts, my emotions, my desires. Totally. But God's saying, if you want to be first in my kingdom, serve everyone else. Yeah. And right now, Find a neighbor. If you have a neighbor that's high risk, write them a note right. and just be like, hey, my name is so-and-so. I'm your neighbor. Uh, awesome. Is there anything outside you need me to do? Don't yeah, go into their house, idea. but figure out what you can do to serve them. Because right now, more than any time in our life, we have availability and we can yeah. serve people. So find a need, serve your family, serve yeah. your friends, and just love on them right now. Uh, because that's what serving is. Serving is putting others first. It's sharing. Yeah. It's generosity. So let's live in that moment. Yeah. Um, the thing I love about this entire story with the widow that had no name and her son mm -hmm. that has no name is she had an opportunity. At the very first part of this in verse 7, yes, God instructed her to feed Elijah. He yeah. instructed her to feed this person. But it was up to her to say yes or no. Right. And she had a moment to where she could put her trust in herself when she was gathering sticks and Elijah's like, hey, I need water. Hey, um, do you have anything to eat? And she's like, well, actually, I'm gathering these sticks to go feed my son and I our last meal. And then she we're going to go probably die. probably hoping that he would ask her, honestly. Probably. <laughs> um, it's like asking for the last little bit of hand yeah. sanitizer or toilet paper. Right? Like, no, sorry, don't have any. Um, but she had a moment to say, you know what? I'm going to put all my trust in myself or I'm going to put my trust in what God has asked yeah. me to do. And oftentimes when we put our trust, if she, if she would have put her trust in herself, this wouldn't have been a story worth talking about. Right. And it probably wouldn't have even been in the Bible because yeah. she would have been dead. But she put her trust in what God had asked her to do. And for three and a half years, every time she went to that flour barrel and she went to that oil, God yeah. provided. And she yeah. was able to sustain her life because she trusted God in a season where everything else was chaos because there was famine and drought all over the place for three and a half years. Wow, that's so powerful. Are you trusting God with everything you have? Are you leaning into God right now in this season? Because I promise you, I don't want you just to have trust right now. I want this moment in your life, wherever you're at, if you're watching on your couch, if you're watching on your bed, with your family, whatever. I want you to learn that trust shouldn't just come when things are good yeah. and trust shouldn't just come when things are bad trust God with every single step. All right, so here's how this comes down. Here's how we want to end in the night with a question and response. The last three weeks we've been talking all about trust because we want you to put all of your trust in God. So in just a moment, there's going to be some questions on the screen. And what we want from you is to make wherever you're at your altar, make it your space to say, God, have I done this? Have I trusted you? Have I made myself available? Have I served my family? Have I served my friends? And have I stepped out in faith? Mm -hmm. So take a moment, respond to those questions, and then Lindsay and I will be back yeah. to talk to you guys a little bit more.
right, guys, well, welcome back. Let's pray and we'll end the night. God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for um, each and every student and leader watching wherever they're at right now. God, I pray that they would learn from these last three weeks to, to step out in faith and to trust you to build a foundation that lasts and is strong. And I pray, God, that right now we would serve our family, we would serve those around us, and we would step out in faith at what you've asked us to do. But more importantly, we would use this moment to make ourselves available and ask God, what do you have for me today? every single moment of this quarantine, however long it lasts. I pray that we would spend time with you and ask, what do you have for me today? Thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And we pray, amen. Amen. Well, we love you guys. And yeah, we, we are so excited that we get to see you guys, whether that's Zoom groups on Sunday nights or even just being with you guys together watching this message. It's so cool, just the family that we have here. And so yeah, I wanna say that keep watching. like. Keep watching on Sunday, on Saturday nights. We have our Easter message that's coming up this weekend. And so sit down, get with your family and yeah, watch. We wanna see how you watch, how you stream. So make sure that you guys are tagging us. And also if there is any videos, if you guys wanna go back and watch any of the messages for the last couple of weeks, then they're gonna be on our YouTube page. Yep. So yeah, just know that we love you and we miss you and wish you were here. Assembly.org slash live for Easter services. Yes. Hey, tomorrow is Trick Shot Thursday at home. So share <laughs> your favorite trick shot. That's Make right. a couple, whether you're on stairs, Maybe throwing I'll attempt cups. Some. We'll see. Absolutely, you're going <laughs> to attempt some. But we love you guys. We'll see you later.